high plums of steam have risen from the eruption sites at Sudnuka Giger uh, yesterday when 2000 degree hot lava came in contact with groundwater in the area. Uh, Steinman Helgadotter, a natural hazard specialist at the Icelandic Met Office, said in an interview with the morning newspaper that there is a lot of groundwater at the eruption sites and so it is not unusual for jets like that to form. She said that the groundwater is actually boiling and that's why the steam plums rise like this. She said the phenomenon is known from volcanic eruptions in this area but maybe on a larger scale now. There is still activity at the volcano but it is limited to a few craters in the center of larger fissure and in its northern end. And now let's take a look how the volcano looks right now from live cams in the evening July 17th. From this live cam which is placed at, uh, at Silinga Fatpat by Icelandic uh, television company you can see the volcano erupting right now. You can see the it's the southern tip of the fish, or more to the middle, I would say. Yeah, it's the middle part. There is also some activity a bit further south and further north. So there is eruption ongoing in a few places, but the activity is concentrating in the middle of the fish, I would say. Yeah, this is now in the evening on uh, July 17th. It's about uh, one day and a half since it started last night. At 3.55 a.m. A curious event took place yesterday in the year, right after the volcano started, and it's worth to report it. Some planes got diverted from Keplavik International Airport yesterday, but it wasn't a decision coming from Iceland. It was a decision made by the airlines for no sound reasons. Two United Airlines planes that were en route to the to Iceland yesterday morning were diverted to the United States due to the volcanic eruption that began at Sunuka Giger last night. Isavia press officer confirmed this, but it wasn't an independent decision by the airline. There was no disruption to Keplavik Airport's operations due to the uh, lava outbreak and no recommendations were issued for the aircraft to be turned around. The planes were en route from New York and Chicago and were scheduled to land around 7 and 8 in the morning and were therefore on their way to the country when the eruption began just before 4 in the morning. Uh, so it was a kind of strange news because those eruptions are small, they do not affect uh, the air of traffic in any way. So. Everybody is welcome to Iceland. Planes are flying as, as usual. So if there was such a decision made, it's solely by airlines themselves, not from Iceland. So Iceland is safe to visit. You're welcome. You can come here anytime. Planes land, uh, roads are open. It's a small eruption. It doesn't affect uh, air traffic or roads uh, to the airport in any way. Uh, regarding the earthquakes uh, which preceded the eruption, uh, earthquakes started just after midnight, um, right before the eruption, some three hours, three, four hours before it started, and they fell almost immediately after the eruption started, so almost four hours. Uh, there were altogether 57 quakes in six hours over the area from midnight onward. And they move it mostly from the south to the north as the swarm progresses. Here you see the map of all earthquakes uh, during that period before the eruption. The quakes also got shallower at the very end of the swarm as they progressed northward. But that trend isn't perfect. That is why there was some speculation that this was just a dike in intrusion and not an eruption. A precursor, so the eruption notice was in fact very short for this uh, volcano. There was a small amount of seismic drop off leading up to the swarm, like we have seen in other eruptions, but there also wasn't a lot of seismic noise prior to that, which is also seen. So, in this respect, this eruption in terms of seismic activity was a bit strange, very little seismic activity before and during the eruption. Uh, 
the gas pollution uh, related to the volcanic eruption has been noticeable in recent days. The pollution status is as follows. Pollution from wildfires is now considered the greatest risk in the built-up areas, but such pollution is not measured by sulfur dioxide meters and therefore does not appear in traditional pollution forecasts. Sulfur dioxide has been measured across the country, most in West Iceland and also in the North, North Iceland and East Iceland. The distribution of pollution depends on prevailing wind direction and therefore local pollution can change rapidly from day to day. So there was extreme gas pollution very much northwest of Iceland as you see. And this is how the volcano looks from nearby airport highway. It was filmed by my friend last night. Uh, currently I'm not in Iceland. Unfortunately I went out just before the volcano erupted. I'm currently in France but I will be in Iceland in a few days, hopefully the volcano will be still erupting and I will manage to film it from my drone. So stay tuned, more updates are coming and be well, have a good night and God bless.